Hi, welcome to the first day of a brand new challenge. And we're in Retford in Nottinghamshire. So what's on the menu today, Al? Rumour has it we've got a staircase to remodel. Oh, I like models, yeah. Yeah, very nice. It is beautiful, isn't it? So, Carol and Dave, what would you like us to do while we're here? Right, Tommy, um, what we'd like to do is to bring back the splendour to our stairs. As you can see in the 60s, it was, it was altered and it now, you know, it doesn't do anything for the hallway. You know, with it being the entrance, we'd like it to be really nice. Well, yeah, well, it's a nice, impressive hallway. Uh, well, this could be interesting. We'll see what we can do. But first thing what we've got to do is move all the furniture out of here. You feeling fit? Yeah. OK, let's move all the furniture. Great. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Well, it's not Big Al. That's all the furniture and the carpets taken out the way. Now we're actually going to open up the staircase to see what's revealed underneath. Now, you could be lucky, and the spindles could still be underneath. Now, you may wonder why I'm sawing through these rather than just ripping them out. The reason being, this is the staircase string that's going to be seen afterwards, so I don't want any of the timber to split out by just wrecking it. We've had the house about nine years. We wasn't looking for something as, as big as this. One house we went for, we'd been pipped at the post, so that had gone. And uh, my brother asked me if I'd seen this property. Came to have a look, and it was obviously bigger than what we were looking for. And also, it was, it was for sale with two other plots with it, which made it a lot more expensive than what we could afford. So uh, I approached the owner and asked him if he was interested in selling just the house, and he'd, he'd consider it, which he did do. And after a bit of negotiation, we, you know, we got the house. But um, it was a real mess, derelict. There was um, a squatter in it at one time. It's been a long process, nine years now, and we're still doing it. As you come through the entrance door, the staircase was really, really bland. Because it's a lovely hallway, uh, we wanted it to be a real nice feature, and the staircase did nothing for the room at all. It uh, was totally flat and boring. We'd really like to have a spindle staircase with a turn at the bottom to make it really, really elegant and fit with the, with the style of the house. Right, is this ready to come off of it? Yeah. Well, that was. <laughs> that should have been doweled. Yeah, into here. and glued. There's nothing on it. It's very handy, though, because it came out easy. <laughs> that was a gag. Handy, yeah. handrail. Yeah. All right. Well, it was an attempt at a gag, anyway. Stay being a bit Let me put a bar wrong. behind that. Hold it now. Hold it, hold it. I'll just. You lift the lever up. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Open plan staircase. Yes. It's a bit iffy, though, open plan staircase, because you could quite easily... <laughs> Would you catch me? No. Well, it's cleaned all that lot up. Now, I'll start taking off this panel. Would you take them smooth edges off? Yeah, sure. After one, three. three. One, two, three. Ooh. <laughs> Tom, do you know my foot's through the bar straight? Well, you hum it and I'll sing it, dear. <laughs> Last bit done. So, exactly, Carol, how old is this house? I think it's just over 100 years old. Well, that makes it Lake Victorian, yes, then. Yes, that's right. Yeah, it's an impressive house. I want to come down the back of the garden to have a proper look at it, really. It's been altered quite a bit, we believe, since the original building. The roof has been changed. That wouldn't have been the original roof. They're modern tiles. Well, it used to be a three-storey house. Oh, did it? Yes. So, when we... When we Went up in the attic just after we bought it. There was floorboards and doorways and walls from the original rooms. That chimney stack's not original either. There's You're finding all sorts of things if you have a close look at it, actually. 
We've got some nice features like the stone mullions around the original windows. Yes. And these dental features in the brickwork, they're very nice. This caught my eye on the way <laughs> down here. I mean, the work in it, the roof work is fantastic. It's nice, isn't it? What is it? It's a coach house. There's a um, stable there that they used to keep the horse in. And the coach would be kept in this end here. So this was the coach house for this house? Yes, yes, it's the original coach house for that house. But we didn't buy them together. We bought the house first, and then we bought the coach house about five years ago. Oh, so someone had split them at some time? That's right. Because this must have been a really, really impressive house because of the size of the plot and the fact that you've got this lovely coach house down the bottom. I think we'd actually better get back inside because Al's going to be saying, where are you, why aren't you working, you know? He moans all the time, you know. Well, we've stripped all the old cladding off the staircase and just as luck would have it, it's not our lucky day because there are no spindles underneath. So now we've got to come up with something that's going to make this staircase look a bit like its former Victorian glory. Now I'm going to hand that over to Al. Let's have a look at your drawing, mate. Right, what we've got here is the existing outside wall there and then down here we've got the string. What I thought we'd do is come up three steps with a quarter landing with a null post on there and a half null there, the handrail running through and spindles below it. The handrail down into the squirrel's tail. We call it a monkey's tail. A monkey's tail? Mm. Oh, right. Well, a monkey's tail then. We'll... And then... And that's I'll a double go... ball nose. And that's a double ball nose. So that'll come across there. So that's one tread, that's the second tread, and then onto the quarter landing. And then return back up there, spindles again, and then on the landing back there like so. That's great, but the only problem I see is that the existing new post up here and here, if you're going to take them out and replace them, you'll have to disassemble the whole staircase. Well, no, if we... Oh, yeah, but you're going to put the... We're going to slot... It's a two-section new post. It is, yeah. You could possibly adapt that one and that one to match the bottom section of the new post. Yeah, yeah. And we can do them in situ. Yeah, because the string's painted. That's oak at the moment, so that can be painted. Yeah. And so we then just continue up there with the spindles. The handrail and the top part of new polished. Yes. And the spindles and the, and the strings painted, painted. white. Yeah. By a gum, I think he's cracked it. Now, this might seem a bit dramatic. But what we've got to do is remove this portion of the existing null posts, which are oak, and then we've got to drill down to receive the new turned null posts that are going to be affixed to these. So first off, I've just got to cut this off level. Right. What I've got to do here to mark a centre line by forming a cross and then I've got to drill down with a core bit which is then going to receive the spigot end of the new null post so that will drop in there like so with a bit of luck if it doesn't I'm in trouble next stage you've got to try and pick up these little pieces out. That's the last bit in the bottom of the hole. Now the moment of truth. Voila. What's that piggling all about? What does that mean? It's the same as rooting and ferreting. It's extracting, taking out. Rooting and ferry. Well, in northern terms, then, is it? Yeah. Well, interesting. Don't worry, it won't matter. No, never mind. Oh, don't start again. <laughs> Hi, welcome to day two of our challenge. Now, the task we've been given is to take this staircase, which has been put in recently, but not very well, and turn it into something more sympathetic to its surroundings in this house, which is a Lake Victorian house. Now, we've taken out the handrails and the balustrading and exposed the strings down the side. What we have to do now is put the new null posts on and the handrails and then the spindles. Put the staircase back together again? Yeah, in effect. Now, my first job is to glue the null posts no, in. Hang on a minute, mate. We've got to chamfer the tops of these, then that can go in. OK, well, hurry up, let's get going. I 
I'm just chamfering off these tops of the existing newels because these are the ones that are going to be put in downstairs. So we've got to keep them looking the same. So that's got that as finished off. Now the reason for doing this is because on this side of the null post, here and at the top, there's already a half round, or a quarter round, I should say, on the null post, so we've got to bring that up on all four sides to match. Cut this one down the side, this newel post, in anticipation of Alan cutting the hole out and fitting a turn newel post on top of there. Now, down here on this first one that we've cut, it's ready to be fitted, ain't it? Yeah, it's time to put this one into the existing newel base. You made a nice job of that. Yeah, it's come up all right, hasn't it? Now, one thing to remember is, when you're using the bracket system, you've got to remember which way these are, because they're not at the same level. Now, I've marked this one for running down and that one for running up. Yeah, that one for running up. So, one thing not to, not to forget. Crafty little number this is. This dowel is going to be inserted into there, like so. And as that pushes down, it spreads these cuts open, thus locking them into the pocket that we've drilled in the newel base. And that is the same length as that. So... If you've got the pocket too deep to receive this, you're going to be in trouble because it won't swell this out enough. <laughs> I'm cutting a piece of fascia board to cover the trimmer on the staircase upstairs. Now, if you want to cut a bit of sheeting up, take it into the doorway like this. So you use that as your, as your stop. Put it on a piece of timber behind the cut line, and then cut away to your heart's content. I don't know about you, but painting can be boring. So I thought of an idea, come this way, on how we could get David and Carol involved to do something useful, while me and Alan get on with something else. Now, I've set up something like a bit of a production line in here. Hi, guys, how are we doing? Hi. Yeah, yeah. Now, you don't really know what you're in for here, but what I'll try and show you is what we want you to do. Now, okay. this is primer, oil-based primer paint. Now, I want you to work through these like a production line. It's a system. Husband and wife production team, you know? Now, you only got a painting? We've done a bit, yeah. So, do you need any demonstration or are you okay? I'd like to see a professional at work. Well, hold on, I'll just go and see if I can get one <laughs> passing by. Excuse me, right. Now, there's two brushes, one for you. Thank you. I'll just hang on to your one, David. And I'll just show you what I want you to do quickly. So, we'll put the pot in the middle so you can share it. Dip the brush in, load it up well. Obviously, cut it back on here. Don't be frightened to load the brush up. I've really stirred it, that paint, so it's well mixed, the oil. One of these works one side, one the other. And paint these and go right the way to the bottom. Yes. Okay. Okay, Tommy. So you go halfway. Then come back here and then just rotate it one, paint that, then rotate the next one, paint that. Time you get to the bottom, this should be drying and you can come back and rotate them all again. Well, I hope that's abundantly clear. <laughs> it's up to you now, guys. Now it's time to find the angles for the handrail and the easiest way of doing that is to use what we call a sliding bevel. Now we set the back of the sliding bevel onto the string which is the same angle as the handrail is going to be. Set it at the angle and the easiest way then is to transfer that angle to the chop saw for where we cut the ends on the handrail. I'll go and do that now. Give it a try. 
try. And here's the test piece. Uh, it's perfect. That's the sample off the chop saw, marked off the sliding bevel. Now, what we've got to do is, this is a bracket fix system, so we've got to offer that in there, the right way round, like so. And then this will be on there, like so. That drops down till it's tight. And when you've done that, you put a little mark on there and there, and then all of your marking on your handrail goes from the groove side at the bottom to the groove side at the top. Now, moment of truth. That's in there, Tommy. Yep. With this handrail, you then put your bracket in first, bring the handrail up into position. Can we give you a hand? No, that's it. That's spot on. What's yours like? Perfect. All right. Then you bring the plate up, tighten it up, and screw it into position. After that, you just put the washer and the nut on, tighten the nut up, and it tightens everything up. There's 75 of this size, and then there's a few more different size for on the landing. So we've got quite a few to go, haven't we? Now this is the bottom track. This is actually what we fit the spindles into and have a packing piece either side to hold them. Right, Al, shall we put this in? Centre it? Yeah. You all set? Um, yeah, that feels about right. Now ready-made spindles off the shelf when you buy them, they always have a long piece at the bottom and a short piece at the top. That's how they must fit in. Now you have to cut these to size. So firstly, we know what the angle is because we've already cut the hammer out to suit the angle. All right, we've finally got to put these spindles in. Now, there's a very crucial measurement whenever you're doing a staircase and you're putting spindles in. The distance between the spindles mustn't be more than 100 mil, which is four inches in old money. Now, the reason for that is some, the great, uh, the great and the good have ascertained that anything less than 100 mil, four inches, and a child will be able to get his head through there and he might either get trapped or fall through down to the, to the floor below. 100 mil, four inches, don't forget. Always remember as well, the longer piece at the bottom, the shorter piece at the top. So take your time to get it right, because if you get one the wrong way round, it will always stand out. This is the plate. I've just put a chamfer down the edge to neaten it up a bit. But what I, I've got to do here is to cut this through here, and then that will be fixed to the wall, and then the null post, or the half null, I should say, will be on there. Very quiet up there, Al. I know. I know I am. You're it's... concentrating. Well, it could be excused as concentration, but... It's not going to plan. Everything I'm touching... The plaster's running out and rolling out this way. I've got a straight bit of wood that way. And... Oh. Sounds like you're having a right whinge to me, actually. Good idea. Every so often, say three or four spindles, just check with a level to make sure that there's still a dead plum. If you have a look, you can see she's just creeping out a little bit. And that means that you'll have to trim down one of these packers, whichever way, just to correct it. In this case, if you have a look here, I've just got to move it out to get it level. There's a gap at the bottom to get it plumb. And that means I've got to trim the top one down by just half a blade's width.
That's it. Now, Holly. Thanks. Right, well, we're halfway through our challenge. We've managed to rip out all that horrible old staircase and install this beautiful sort of reproduction Victorian staircase, if you like. We've still got quite a lot to do. We've got to finish off that string down there, put the spindles and the handrails in, make the quarter landing, and, of course, put the monkey's tails in. Now, Victorians normally use a lovely staircase like this to make a grand entrance. But I think me and Al have worked so hard that we're going to use it to make a grand exit. So we'll see you on day three. Hi, and welcome to day three of our challenge. And we're in Retford in Nottinghamshire. And our task is to try and recreate the wonderful staircase that once graced this beautiful Victorian house. Well, let's get With on. that, let's yeah. get a cup of tea first, huh? On the first half of the challenge, what we've had to do here is remove all of the old ugly balustrading and the handrails and then cut off the null posts to the correct height, fit the new turned null posts, fit the new handrails and the spindles right round to this point up here. And what we've got to do for the second half of the challenge is to complete this section of the staircase by putting in new spindles and a new null post here. But the pièce de résistance for this staircase, to sort of return it to its former glory, is instead of having it just stepping off here, we're going to create a quarter landing here. So as you come down, you turn on the landing, turn this way, and there'll be a new null post here, formed in the shape of what we call a monkey's tail, and a complementary one this side, with a handrail or spindles to the wall. So you've got a real glamorous staircase, making a lovely entrance like that. I've always liked period houses, yeah. I think you get the extra space, and... Um... Also, I think the, the, the built seems to be built better. I mean, standing for you know 100 plus years has got to say something, hasn't it? The kitchen, um, it was a real mess. I lived with it for a while, and uh, we've been steadily getting it back to how we, you know, how we got it now. We've put a new fireplace in the living room. Although quite a lot of the fittings were taken out of this house, we'll eventually try and put most of them back or retain some of the period style that. Uh, that the house deserves, I think. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, lovely. In order for us to create our landing here, we've got to take this new post off so that we can leave this string here undamaged so we can cut it down to put the new new post back here. This is a mortise and tenant here, and that goes into the new post. So technically, the weight of the staircase is transferred onto the new post which is physically sitting on the floor. But because we've got this wall in here, it's really superfluous, this new post just holds the handrail. Yeah. The weight of the staircase is actually taken on this brick wall. See, in old houses, when you don't really know what you're going to find until you open them up. I mean, we've been lucky in this case because it's going to save us about an hour and a half's labour, isn't it? Yeah. But we can't always guarantee what you're going to find. No. We've just been... We've just we've been lucky on this occasion. All right, well, I'll chop this out, and then we'll readdress how we're going to do this, yeah? Yeah. Now the bricks are cleared from underneath, I can start cutting the string to receive the null post. But you've got to do it accurate. that into position. Now the dowels, they're already cut to length and the chamfered on the ends. And the reason for this is so that they'll go through the hole and lead into the next hole that's in the staircase string. 
very important. The other item that I've done is put a groove down the length of the dowel. This is so that when all the glue from the dowel is pushed into the bottom of the socket, it's got a relief groove so that the excess can come back out. And if you don't do that, if you keep hammering it, it will spelch and blow out the side of the string through pressure. So it's time to glue them in now and hope that they fit. I've got to join two pieces of handrail together here. Now, it's quite a clever way that they do it. That's a wood screwed end, and this is a machine screwed end. Now, the wood screwed end goes in there, like so, and the machine screwed end comes out this way, and then you just pop a nut and a washer on there, and it tightens the joint up. The crowning glory for any staircase is a new post caps. Now, we've been hunting all around Retford to try and find someone who can make us some real special ones. And we've been told about this guy, Peter, who's in this quaint little workshop here, and he's an expert woodturner. Hi, is it Peter? Hello? Hello. Oh, yeah. Uh, you're a difficult man to find, you know, tucked away in this workshop in the middle oh, of nowhere. Oh, do you think so? <laughs> Mind you, it's a typical carpenter's workshop. Or wood turners, if you like, because yeah. it's nice and tidy. Yeah, of course, always tidy. Shavings like everywhere. Yes, that's it, typical. That's nice. What's this? Uh, a pine snooker leg. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to play snooker with it, though, would you? Let's be fair. I probably could better, do better than with an ordinary rod, yeah. <laughs> oh, they're normally made out of mahogany, don't they, these? Uh, yes, it's the... Uh, Lower end of the market, but it's sustainable forest, you see, so it's better. Oh, uh, well, oh, we're yeah, going to cheat it. More green, yes, yeah, more green. You're going to stain it and varnish it? Not me, the person <laughs> who's making them. <laughs> now, you're making some null caps for us, aren't you? Yep. Oh, is this impressive. one of them here? That's going to be one, yes. In mahogany? Yep. Well, I'd better let you get on, I don't want to stop you. Right, yo. Away okay, you go. Okay, right. There you go, the perfect orb. Now I've constructed the swan's neck and I've just got to connect it now to the main run of handrail. So I want a bit of glue around the face. Drop it in there. And this is the fiddly bit. That's it, all done, and put it in. Now, fingers crossed, this is going to fit. Get that in there. Feed the bolt in at the top. Oh, that looks nice. Get that tightened up, job done. The lower flight of stairs, we're going to put in the base track for it. Good fit, stroke a lap, goggles on. Am I happy? Yes, I'm happy. Now time to form the quarter landing. I've transferred all of the measurements and put them onto this sheet of plywood full size. Now even the timber sizes that I've drawn on are full size as well. From that you can take all of your measurements and cut them all and then bring them on, place them in position like so, and then you know if you're going wrong anywhere. So it's just now a case of screwing it together. I've done many of these sort of staircases. I've done a lot of staircases, like fitted standard ones, and then made from scratch in the workshop. But actually doing one like this, I can't honestly say that I've created a new landing on site 
like this for a return down, no. But I enjoy doing them. Oh, good. Have you? So this is the first? Yeah. What I've got in mind on this... Sorry, I... You know, right, was to put one leg up the back here, like that. Yeah. And then bring the null post down so that we can fix the null up here and to that. All along the length of that, All yeah. All along the length of it. And then a couple more legs, one there and one there. And then put the landing top on it. Well, that's a nice tight fit out. Yeah, not bad, is it? Let's test it out for weight. Yeah. A very good day's work. Not bad. Hi, and welcome to the last day of the challenge. Our task has been to take out this staircase, which was fitted in the 60s and totally out of character with the Victorian surroundings. And what we've got to do today, Mr Al? Right. Two null posts. Yes. Two steps. Yes. Two squirrels' tails going up into swan necks. Job done. Out the door. If only it were that easy. I'll go and get the tools and see if we can get out quick. OK. Now, normally, this would be part of the construction for the bottom landing. But because we've already made the frame, I'm just going to use the frame as an anchor for this. So I've just got to screw this one in position and then pop the null turning on top. That'll be another bit of progress towards completion. I think we can safely say that that is home. Now, normally, when I'm building a staircase, I would build it in a workshop. But it doesn't always have to be built in a workshop. You can build small sections on site. Now, what I've done here is formed the top landing, and now I'm working backwards down to the bull nose. So, I've put in my first riser, a brace here to support the weight of the back of the tread, and then as the tread comes into position, that will be screwed down and fixed there. And then the riser, which is going to carry the weight of the tread when you stand on it, that's going right down to the floor and that will all be fixed and screwed. And then the bull nose will travel across and then come round and along here for us to put a handrail and spindles up. So you can build on site. You don't have to do it in a workshop. It's just a bit easy. When we first bought the house, it was uh, completely overgrown and there was some really old shrubs in the front. And we just started to clear it and got a JC bin to pull up the roots and just grass the front. So it was a matter of just looking through, digging out and getting the best what was, you know, worth having, basically. The back garden is a different matter. Yeah. I think it's still a work in progress. Yeah, the back garden was sort of up to here with weeds. We spent a couple of days chopping everything down and then... Uh, a lot of friends came and helped. A lot of friends. And uh, we got a chat with a, a small tractor to come in and plough it all up to give us a, a start on levelling it and getting it reasonable to, to sow some grass seed. Right, now I've got to cut an end panel for the stairs. So I've measured from the wall to the newel post and cut this section, but we have a problem with the skirting, so we have to do a scribe, what we call a scribe over the top of it. Now, I'm lucky because I've got an off-cut of skirting, but if you haven't, the simplest way to do it is to take a compass and you notice that it will work out exactly the same size as that gap up there. And then you just keep it tight to the skirting it and then you follow that up. Yes, that follows the curves all the way around. That's it. Have a little trick there. Just cut it out with a jigsaw. Right, 
Right, now that was the old skirting, which is a bit ropey by anyone's standards. But what I did, I took that out, and it had this clever mould on top. This one. So I carefully took this moulding off here, and then planted it on top of some MDF, glued it and screwed it. I don't know. All you have to do is <sighs> slot it in, fix back to the wall, job done. What do you think, David? It's coming on great. You enjoying your painting? I think Carol's giving us a brush off, don't you? <laughs> I know she disappeared. Maybe she's making a cup of tea. Great. I'll go and tell her two sugars. Now, I'm making the double bullnose tread at the bottom of the staircase. This is the very first tread as you enter the staircase, so it's got to be as good as the rest of it. Now, the reason it's called the double bullnose is because this is the shape of a bullnose, and there's two of them. Now, off this bullnose, we've got a volute newel on either side, spindles that are cut at different lengths that lead up into the monkey's tail, that go up into the swan neck, that enter into the newel post. It sounds really complicated, and it is, but when you see it in, posi in position, it'll look gorgeous. <laughs> Well, this has been a real, a real pain, this bit. Has it? Well, because of the two fixed ends, you know, when you're putting these in, yeah, they're slightly, they're very tight fitting, but of course you've got to, when they're on an angle, to get them in the point, the two longest points, make them longer than 900 mil. Yeah. So it's very nice of you to give me this part to do. You thought that was going to be the easy bit. Who did? I did. That's why I gave it to you. Oh, yeah. See, I was thinking about you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> How are you getting on with that? Looks pretty good. Yeah, well, that goes in there. Um, then we've got the volute coming off there and we can start setting everything up. Magic. Yeah, it looks good, that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll get that drilled and then we can start getting some handrails in, yeah? <laughs> now for the time for the volute newel. Now this goes... What do you call that, Al? A volute newel. Well, why is it called a volute newel? Well, I was always taught that it was a volute newel because there wasn't a square at any point on it. Now, it's, it only relates to a staircase, apparently. When you say it, because it goes around in a circle like that? Yes, because it's a full turning without any square section, like on the newel posts. What do you, how do you say it again? Volute. Volute. Hmm. V-O-L-U-T-E. Interesting. <laughs> Now, for the finishing touches to this staircase, we've got to apply varnish. Now, this is a water-based varnish. Although it's white, when it goes on, it will be clear when it dries. Now, it's very important that you actually varnish all this hardwood handrail very soon after you fit it, because if people use it unvarnished, then the greasy hand marks get into the timber. It's very hard to get them out and very hard to apply the varnish. So, a nice, clean brush. But I'm not doing all this. Carol is. Yeah, Carol. You can have a crack. Yeah. Okay, just take your time with it. Okay. It's really lifting the colour of the wood, isn't it? Oh, you're very good. Yeah, well, you're made for TV. <laughs> lifting the colour. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to think up some more lines, actually. <laughs> Now, to make our lives a little easier on this job, I've used flexible plywood, and you can see here, look, how flexible it is. Saved ourselves a lot of work. The finishing touch to the staircase is to put some glue around the final ball, and that's job done. Well, Mr Hurd, what do you think? I love it. Really pleased with it. Are you? Well, I think it looks fantastic. When you consider what we started with, it was all closed panelled, there was no light. No. Muffled sound. And it was ugly. It didn't really do justice. Beautiful open space, did it? That's right. Do you know what? I think that we've created a staircase to stare at. <laughs> Well, 
Well, Karen David, what do you think? I think it's absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. Know, it's, we couldn't have expected it to be as nice as this. It's so it's better than you anticipated? Yes, yes it is. That's wonderful. I'm it's really pleased. Nice. What, even though you got fed up with painting? <laughs> <laughs> and what about this quarter landing that you have here now? You can make a real grand entrance, sweeping down the stairs, yes, standing there, giving out your commands to Dave. <laughs> What do you reckon, though? It's great. It's really lovely. It's yeah. made a transformation for the hallway. Lovely. Lovely. Transformation well, a... for the house. Well, I'm glad. It's been a real tough job. It's been hard, but it's been good. I'm really pleased with the end result. Yeah, so am I. Yeah. Looks elegant. Yeah. Well, that's the end of another challenge. From me and Big Al, till the next time, see ya. I think the staircase is absolutely amazing compared to what it was before Tommy and Alan came. It just seemed to open up the hallway completely. It's made it so much lighter. Yeah, it? yeah. It seems a lot more light and it's the sound in there is a lot nicer. Just really great. The job that they've done, Alan and uh, Tommy, really good. Especially the quarter landing. Uh, yeah, that sort of brings it round into the hallway instead of it just coming to a stop. There's over 70 spindles and Tommy set us on early on on a production line, didn't they? Yeah, we was priming them first and yeah. then we've been undercoating them, so yeah. everyone's been round twice. Yeah, it's been a long, it's laborious job. Hours and hours. Yeah. Quite therapeutic, though. It's been a bit tense, a bit exciting and lots of cups of tea. The banter never stops off screen. Still, the jokes are flying all day and everybody's been really great. You know, it's been... A lot of fun. Real good experience. <laughs>